Yes, yes, y'all, and you don't stop, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Verbal Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are all doing well. I really do hope that, my dear, sweet friends. Sal Niguez, first interview with Chelsea. The elite box-to-box -box midfielder, as he calls himself, who's joining Thomas Tuchel's... Um, Squad, who of course has been playing as a wing back, full back out at Atletico Madrid, not having his happiest time, even though he's just won La Liga with them. So keen to learn English, integrate into the squad, and play under Thomas Tuchel. I want to speak about a few things that he said in his uh, first interview with Chelsea Football Club and reflect on um, what is a really, really exciting time for Chelsea. Uh, we've got an excellent new midfielder, and I think this is actually quite an understated signing. Heard some people talk about him saying, oh yeah, Chelsea have got another player they don't need. I, I think, I can't remember what, if it was the um, the Totally Football Show. I heard one of the pundits talking about, oh yeah, like jovially saying, oh Chelsea have got another player they don't need. Fantastic squad. When in fact, Chelsea fans do know this is a great and important signing for Chelsea Football Club. Really, there were two key uh, areas to... Um, sort out this transfer window. Of course, the striker, which we've done, and Romelu Lukaku. I think everyone agrees with that. But similarly, to a sort of uh, an important place we needed to look at was the midfield. We all know it. N'Golo Kante's injuries leave two elite midfielders in two positions when fighting in multiple competitions. Four competitions, five if you uh, include the Club World Cup. Lots of stuff going on, so you need cover there. And not only do you need cover, you need a different profile of player. Sal Neguez offers something slightly different to all our elite midfielders. He's a little bit of Mateo Kovacic. He's a little bit of Kante. You know, he's got all these things. So we're going to talk about his interview today. It's very, very promising. Um, this is a lot of positive stuff. Do consider dropping a like to support the video to support the video to support the channel it really means a lot thank you all for being so kind and loving and if you are new or indeed a returning visitor that's yet to subscribe consider subscribing uh because hey you get notified if you press the bell and if you want to follow me on instagram you're welcome to for a more of an insight uh of my life so you might dig that all right then i've written some notes uh down because it was uh, largely in Spanish and the subtitles, and there's some stuff I wanted to talk about. First of all, he um, spoke about his uh, conventional dream. He didn't pretend to be a Chelsea fan, because that would have been so transparent. In fact, he talked about Atletico Madrid being home. He's been there for 15 years. But he did speak of his dream to play in the Premier League, and you can understand that as a, as a footballer. Um, you know, he's in his prime, by the way. I keep thinking he's like... 29 or something, but he's 26 years old, kind of just about to enter his prime. It's just he's been around for so, so long, Sal, um, you know, at a high, high level. And you can understand these European footballers wanting to play in the Premier League because it's the illustrious league where, yes, there's a lot of money, but all the best players and managers are. You know, now more than ever, Ronaldo's back. We've got all the best managers. Yes, there's a few good ones in Europe, but generally the best managers are in the Premier League. You've got Klopp. Tuchel, Guardiola, um, you know, Ancelotti's gone, but there are loads of other great coaches and, um, yeah, really, really good uh, players, of course. So you can understand his dream to play in the Premier League and he can achieve that with um, an up-and-coming side, an amazing squad, as we all know at Chelsea, and, of course, current champions of Europe. A recurring theme in this um, interview was his... He really hammered home how he wants to learn English. Now, I did I did want to talk about this because it's important. It's about integration into the culture. <clears throat> and I always wax lyrical about the fact how Jorginho was really keen to learn English. And he learned it really quickly. And look how well he's integrated with the team, how he makes everyone laugh. He's like a feel-good guy. And his communication on the pitch is really, really good. And I, um, I think that's really important. So the fact how Saul kept coming back to this and saying... You know, I want to learn English for the culture to understand the club. Uh, he spoke about how um, he's really good friends with the other Spaniards in um, Azpilicueta, Marcus Alonso, and Keperita Balaga. <clears throat> Excuse me. Keper especially, he spoke about a lot. That He's really good friends of him. They were roommates in the uh, Spain squads of youth squads coming up. So he's really good friends with Keper. And it was actually Keper who fed him loads of information about Chelsea 
and Thomas Tuchel. Now, this is really a poignant point because he he gave a glowing reference of Chelsea, but more notably and importantly, he gave a massive glowing reference of Thomas Tuchel. Now, this shows you how much of a team player Kepa is because he's the world's most expensive goalkeeper and he's very much the number two at Chelsea after being the number one. And you think he might be, you know, want to get out, but I think he's actually very happy at Chelsea. I think he feels really valued. Of course, we look at that moment when Thomas Tuchel brings him on for that penalty shootout and just completely trusts him to do a job, uh, which which he did really well. There's that sense of unity. You do feel like Kepa's going to be utilised quite a lot as a really good backup. So there's a sense of Kepa being really happy at Chelsea and he gave Saul a glowing reference of Thomas Tuchel and telling him telling him to join Chelsea. So he spoke of that and of course his close relationship with Kepa more so than Aspi Laqueta and Marcus Alonso who he knows both well, of course fellow Spaniards. And uh, he said he kept talking about wanting to learn English and the facts how he wants Kepa to only speak to him in English. So this is interesting. His Spanish friends, who he can speak to in Spanish, he says, look, teach me English quickly. And I really like that. And I wanted to talk about it because I was so pleased with how Jorginho learned English really quickly. And you might be thinking, yeah, yeah, well, they're in an English team. They'll learn English. No, dude. You know, Diego Costa, there is a funny story of Diego Costa because he actually spoke a bit of English that no one really knew about. Um, you know, I've, I've heard by a couple of journalists that, um, yeah, he just would completely pretend he didn't speak English when he did a bit. But, 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 you know, ultimately he didn't speak much. Sergio Aguero never really learned English. I think it was similar with Alexis Sanchez. You get these top tier players that move to England, live in England for years and just don't learn English and just rely on translators because they're so good at football. Uh, you know, they let them off. But so I, anyway, I don't want to ramble on about that too much. I'm really pleased how he really hammered home on two or three um, times in the interview that he really wants to learn English. Now, he did speak of, it is important that we mention this as well, his um, time at uh, recent times at Atletico Madrid. It's been hard for him, as he said. It has been hard for him. Now, he spoke on his Twitch channel about positional uh, desires. Ooh, that sounds kinky. Um, how he wants to play in the midfield. Of course, he's been farmed out as a fullback wingback at Atletico Madrid and also was dropped for a lot of the time in that winning campaign. Um, and he spoke about that being difficult. Yes, he's happy to win titles, but he's come to Chelsea to play in his... Not just play, but train in his preferred position, right? So he doesn't expect to be dropped into the starting lineup and he recognises how difficult it's going to be to get into this midfield because of the aforementioned players of Jorginho, Mateo Kovacic and N'Golo Kante. I think he understands that's going to be difficult, but he's backing himself to be revitalised in this squad, um, in, in this club at Chelsea, to get back to his best. Sorry, there's like a motorbike going past or something. I might be a plane. Who knows? Anyway, he wants to be revitalized, get back to his best and be coached in the midfield. He wants to go back to his position at Atletico Madrid. He didn't have that. Even when he's out of the team, he was sort of being coached out of position. So he wants to return to that sort of midfield glory. And he absolutely will do that at Chelsea, of course, because we're short on midfielders. That's the whole reason why he's here. So he it is important that we don't sweep under the rug. How he has had a difficult uh, while at Atletico Madrid. Yes, because of playing out of position, but also his form dropping. And I think him recognising that and speaking about that in the Chelsea interview is actually quite important. So I'm very pleased he mentioned that. Um, yeah, and obviously he didn't speak about Thomas Tuchel. Kepa told him about it and he said he's very, very excited to, to be coached by Thomas Tuchel. Um, you know... Obviously, Diego Simeone, his previous coach, is an elite top-tier manager, but what Thomas Tuchel is doing in European football right now is undeniable. If you look at how he performed domestically since coming in uh, to Chelsea, as well as, of course, winning the Champions League, bar a couple of peculiar results uh, in the Premier League, uh, not least West Brom. Um, and yeah, w one thing I did want to talk about as well is how he describes himself. He describes himself as a box to box midfielder and I think it was Andy Brassel the European expert I heard a couple of people talk about Sal I've watched him you know and I've watched him score an elite goal and generally move around the pitch not not you know occupy one tight space he likes to move around he says box to box he's look I want to get in the final third and progress the ball um and uh, essentially you know break this break into the spaces now Angola Kante excuse me does that when he's playing in the midfield 
that right channel, he sort of breaks in and sort of breaks the lines and carries the ball and then tries to combine with one of the number 10s, etc. You can absolutely expect Sal to do that, but he is absolutely defensively resolute. And remember, he's been trained by Diego Simeone and, of course, trusted as a fullback, which have a lot of defensive um, responsibilities. And because he's been played at the highest level and elite level, he can play in tight spaces um, and he can defend well. You can expect Sal to be putting in defensive tackles as well as doing a sort of Kante breaking the lines or Mateo Kovacic dribbling with the ball. He's probably going to be closer in the mould of those players than he will be Jorginho, which of course is more of a metronomic player, also known as a regista. Um, I'm not saying uh, Sal cannot do that, but I can imagine he will want to get more involved. He can sit back, he can uh, defend space, and he can uh, maraud into space. And that is a very uh, complete midfielder that's joining the Chelsea midfield. I really, and so just to wrap up, you know, it's nice that he wants to play in the midfield. He's delighted he'll be coached in the midfield. He's told us he's a box to box midfielder. He wants to integrate into Chelsea as much as possible, learn English as quickly as possible. He's really good mates with Kepa Rita Balaga, although he's also acquaintances with Cesar Azpilicueta and Marcus Alonso. And you can imagine um, other Spanish speakers like, you know, Mateo Kovacic. Um, th- there will be others that I'm missing, I'm sure. He'll uh, he'll talk to all of them. There'll be translators, coaches that speak Sp- uh, Spanish. And hopefully he can um, learn English quickly so he can speak to the rest of his teammates. Uh, really, really exciting. I'm pleased to hear what you said. And to- looking closer at his player profile... I think we got an absolute winner here, boys. Um, so I look forward to watching him training with uh, at Cobham. I'm sure there'll be some sort of pictures of him doing that over the international break. Um, you know, Marcus Alonso will be there and stuff. Other players will be there. I think Aspilicueta's with the Spain team. I haven't checked. There'll be players knocking about. Players will come back. He'll By the time the full first team comes back, he will feel uh, acquainted at to Cobham, you know, feel more at home. It won't be like in shock, loads of players, new place. He'll know the place well. And it's kind of perfect in many ways. Let me know what you think. If you watched the interview, how you feel about Saul, comment down below. Uh, let's start a conversation about an excellent new signing. Uh, drop a like on the channel if you want to show your support to me, uh, Jan, here on Football Therapy, and consider subscribing. All right, guys, enjoy the football, and I'll see you later.